Hey guys, welcome to the video on chapter 12, lesson number two. This video, guys, is going to have three essential questions. Questions you should hopefully have a better idea what the answer is at the end of this. So, the first one is, what is the role of enzymes in the replication of DNA? Second one is, how are the leading and lagging strands synthesized differently? Now, this word here might be a tough one, but really all synthesized means is created. So, if I am making something brand new I am just synthesizing it. So this question here could be better said or easier said is how are the leading and lagging strands created differently and how does DNA application compare on eukaryotes and prokaryotes? So what are the differences between certain types of cells? Okay, so starting off, guys, there are three vocabulary terms for this section. The first one is called semi-conservative replication. Second, third one is second one is DNA polymerase, and the third one is Okazaki fragment. Okay, so first off, guys, you've learned about DNA and what it is, and a little bit about how it works. So, one idea that became very clear with DNA was that DNA is what's called semi-conservative replication. So and when I make when I want to make a brand new strand of DNA, so here's the very here's the strand of DNA inside of a cell. Now this would be like this, this would be like the DNA during the G1 phase, uh, the cell growth cycle. It's just a, it's just it's just a DNA strand by itself. And one of the questions that we were never really sure about as scientists is, is well, how do we copy DNA? Because obviously when you have one cell that's going to have 43 chromosomes inside of it, when it splits, each new cell has the same number of chromosomes. It has 43 and 43. So obviously the DNA is doubling itself somehow. We just didn't really know how it's doing it. And what we discovered was is that the DNA goes through three steps during application. It goes through unwinding, pairing, and joining. So what that would look like then is this. Is that you can see right here you have the blue parent strand. What ends up happening is, is that each strand is unwound and is then and is then created a brand new strand based upon this strand right here. So this strand right here is basically cut in half with each half going to one of the new cells and, and then is then copied. So it's then paired and then joined. So the pairing is the pairing of the new DNA with the old DNA and then the joining afterwards. So essentially the DNA is split in half. Half goes to one cell, half goes to the other cell. And because of the AT GC rule, you can know that if I have a strand of DNA that is like, let's say, oopsies, see it's A and then A and then T. If I have that half of my DNA, well, I know the other half of the DNA is going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be, well, T, T, A. So your body takes advantage of this fact. And all you have to have then is you only have to have one strand of the DNA in order to make the other strand. And that's basically how it works. This whole process is called semi-conservative replication. So now I'm going to go down to the, the individual steps. So the unwinding, um, this is not one of your key terms, guys, but it is one I will ask you about on your CMAP. And unwinding is done by an enzyme called DNA helicase. This is an enzyme that unwinds the helix, breaking down the hydrogen bonds between the bases. That's a very fancy way of saying that it takes two DNA strands, like this. You have these, these, are, the, these are the bonds between the bases. You'd have like an A here and a T here. And what helicase does is it goes in and it breaks these bonds. It kills these bonds between the molecules. That causes the DNA molecules to kind of float apart, like this. Then they're no longer attached to each other. Then what happens is single-stranded proteins keep the DNA strands separate during replication. So there might be a, a protein will then come in here and jump in between and prevent these two DNA strands from actually reattaching. Finally, what happens is, this is another key term you're going to have to toss in there afterwards, is that an RNA primase adds a short segment of RNA primer on each end of the DNA. So that means is that 
Um, another enzyme, so I'll have a little circle here, and he's my, he's my big E for enzyme. This guy's going to come in, and he's going to add RNA to each one of these strands. Now, RNA, guys, I haven't talked about it much yet. I'm going into much more detail on this in three. But RNA is just a version of, it's just, it's just an alternative version of DNA. It's, it's structured a little bit differently, but it's used in DNA application, and it's used in making proteins. So when it happens is these RNA primers get on the DNA, and then another molecule will come in afterwards. That comes into what's called the base pairing. So uh, what happens now is, is that, as you can see here, there's an RNA primer. The helicase is right here. That was the one that unwinds the DNA. And what happens is, is that a molecule called DNA polymerase, an enzyme, comes on down and begins to add the new nucleotides going from the five prime direction to the three prime direction. So this would be like five prime over here and it's moving in the three prime direction this way. And basically it's just building a brand new DNA molecule. Now there's a problem here though guys is, is that because the DNA application has to operate in what's called the five prime to three prime direction well in one case you just have to have one DNA polymerase on what we call the leading strand this thing right here all it's going to be doing is it's going to be adding bases just as this thing unwinds it however on the lagging strand it can't do that and it can't do that because of this five prime to three prime rule. If you can see right here, the RNA primer gets placed at five prime and the DNA polymerase will then create a fragment. Well, the problem is it'll bump into another RNA primer right here because it can't, it can't go this way. The DNA polymerase is unable to go towards the helicase and just move along like this one right here does. So it has to kind of follow its own path. It has to make, these, has to make it basically in fragments. As you can see here, there are these fragments created that the DNA polymerase is adding in there. Well, this is these, these fragments here, guys, are called Okazaki fragments. And a guy named Okazaki, Japanese, you probably could guess, those of you guys who are the anime nerds in the crowd, he discovered this he discovered these and he's oh, these Okazaki fragments and they are a result of this five prime to three prime problem because the DNA can't go from three prime to five prime which would be this way it can only go five prime to three prime it has to build these things in chunks now the final thing is, is, a, is a, there is another enzyme called DNA ligase and DNA ligase basically seals these gaps if you look here guys there are these gaps that get left behind in the bonding and DNA ligase's job is to go in and fix these gaps otherwise the DNA wouldn't be complete and it would be full of holes and that would be really bad you don't want holes in your DNA this guy is a basic overview of the process um, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there that give a good visual for this and I happen to have one right here I don't want to play it during this video because of how the videos are working so you guys probably want to go into the PowerPoint and play this video it is a good job of showing you kind of a visual of how this works and the last part guys is this is that the joining part remember I said there were three phases the final phase is joining in this phase happens the DNA polymerase removes the RNA primer and fills it with DNA so if you look right here you have these little RNA strips this stuff can't stay there it has to get they have to get rid of it well the joining phase does that the joining phase goes in and removes the RNA and fills it with DNA then that one called DNA ligase links the two sections together and then halas finished you have replicated DNA the process guys is complicated I'm not gonna lie to you it took me a long time to figure out how this whole thing worked you're gonna have to put a lot of work into fully understanding how this operates and for that sense guys I kind of apologize but I also say it's really cool as you understand how this works you'll begin to learn how certain diseases become about because a lot of this you'll find out this process guys here is not perfect there's lots of mistakes that happen here and those mistakes can cause huge problems and you'll cover that probably next year so, um, comparing eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So eukaryotes and prokaryotes basically follow the same general rule. 
The only difference is that prokaryotes have their DNA on one giant DNA molecule. It's a big circle, and eukaryotes have it on a chromosome. So usually in prokaryotes, the replication starts in one location right here, and it just goes around in a circle. In eukaryotes, it starts in multiple locations and then finishes up afterwards. So if I was to ask you a question, what's the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic? The big one really is, is that in eukaryotes, like you and me and mom and dad, all those people, we our DNA application starts in multiple places. And in prokaryotes, it starts only in one location. So that's it, guys. This is a lot of information to absorb, so don't feel bad if, if you don't feel like you understood that completely yet. That's what the activities are for. And you want to give an attempt at these three questions right here in your journal. And when that's done, here are your vocabulary terms right here, guys. And thank you very much for your patronage, and I hope you guys can get to work on this and hopefully understand it.